Jordan Roy Byrne from TheDailyGold.com joins us to share what he expects gold and silver to do in the short term in this inflationary environment. This and more on this week's episode of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Jordan Roy Byrne, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you so much for having me. You know, Jordan, last time we spoke back on February 15th, earlier this year, 2022, you had said that the idea that gold can still have this great rally when they hike rates, well, you just don't see it. And you were right, my friend. Great call. From the first rate hike back in March on a monthly chart, it has been downhill for gold. What led you to make that call despite gold being an inflation hedge? Well, um, I think the issue was typically in the last, I want to say three or four Fed cycles, gold had a, uh, a big decline going into when they started hiking. So gold would decline the first two or, or the two or three months before they did the first hike, gold would decline into that. It would make a bottom and then it would rally. And so it didn't do that, you know, because we had the, the Russian invasion and the Ukraine war that um, took the market off that usual course. And so history doesn't always repeat itself perfectly. And so the conditions were different. And so when that, uh, when the, the war premium uh, and that buying faded, uh, and then the Fed began this uh, aggressive tightening, uh, you know, precious metals has succumbed to that for the time being. So uh, that explains where we are. And also you kind of had a, you had a, a false breakout. I was getting excited when gold closed above 1900. I think it made one or two monthly closes above it. Um, you know, I thought that was uh, potentially the point when it could start moving, but that shortly thereafter quickly reversed. So you have a, you had a failed uh, you know, failed break above 1900. When you get a failed move, you tend to get a quick reversal in the other direction. So, and it also looking at gold, I mean, it does have a bit of a double top in the chart. So uh, there's a lot of technical damage uh, right now for gold. It's, um, you know, it's changed quite a bit since we were, since the very beginning of the year. Both gold and silver had four consecutive months of falling prices as seen on a monthly chart. Now, July's monthly candlestick for both metals had a long tail, a pretty long wick. What is the significance of a long tail in technical analysis, especially on a monthly chart? And is it hinting of high prices in the short term? Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's it's kind of, we're getting into the real nitty gritty of technical analysis here, because typically when you have a decline for, I mean, if, whether you're looking at weekly or a monthly chart, when you have a decline for, you know, three, four, five uh, candles before you get that bullish hammer with the long wick that you're talking about, um, typically that setup will give you a bottom in a rebound. However, I mean, the, and again, this is getting into the real kind of fine details of technical analysis. The problem is the, the, the wick uh, is real, was really long last month and gold and silver had already rallied uh, a significant amount from, so in other words, they made the low during the month and then they 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 closed much much higher and created this really long wick where they already recovered uh, a a huge amount inside of the month. Like I would have preferred to see the market for a bullish hammer have less of a wick, uh, have a little bit of a recovery, and then that gets followed by you have a strong white candle that confirms that you put in a bottom. And so the issue now, I mean, looking at the monthly charts of both gold and silver, this month, the body of the candle is trading well down into uh, last month's wick. And so it's, uh, so it's, it's, it's not, I mean, looking at what ha happened last month, um, yes, in general, that kind of a candle is bullish. However, for other reasons, I don't think it signaled I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe that was the bottom for precious metals. But to me, I don't think it was was as bullish of a signal 
as you normally get from that kind of a, a hammer candle. The biggest reason being that the lit, the wick was so long and that the market already made this huge recovery before the month even ended. Jordan, overall, where do you see the short-term support and resistance levels for precious metals for the rest of H2? Uh, well, the short-term support, I mean, you, you, you have the recent lows, basically. You have around 1675, 1680 for gold. And for silver, uh, there was quite a bit of support for silver uh, in the mid to upper 18. So silver did rebound from there. But as we've seen over the last week, uh, the rebound in precious metals has started to fizzle out. And so it looks like even if you're a super bull in the short or medium term, you would have to admit that the gold and silver look like they're going to uh, retest those lows. You've said that the two things to watch for in the coming months are the S&P 500 rolling over and making new lows and the Federal Reserve moving from rate hikes to rate cuts. Now, these are the ingredients for not only the potential start of a new secular bull market in gold, but also a major cyclical upturn in the gold stocks. Jordan, why are you looking at those two things? Okay, well, I mean, it's a two-part answer. When we're looking at secular trends, the issue for gold over the last five or six years is the U.S. stock market has remained in a secular bull market. It's continued to trend higher and higher and make higher highs along the way, even as precious metals have had periods of recovery you know, in the last five or six years, and you know, gold was able over that period to rally from the low around 1040 an ounce up to uh, almost as high as you know $2,100 an ounce. So gold had this great rebound, this pretty good performance over the last five or six years, but it hasn't broken away uh, from even the resistance dating back to 2011. You know, gold is now well below 1900. It had this significant failure where it it broke above, I mean, the, the false breakout we were talking about earlier, it broke above that. And then for a little while, it looked like, wow, this could really be the start. And then it failed, uh, declined below that significantly. So there's really, really significant resistance at 1900 now. And it's just, it, 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 and so gold, gold is not going to be in a secular bull market until it can break above 1900 and then because when it does that that's going to be a signal that this time it's going to break above 2100 and really run and that just it, that's not going to happen when the S&P remains in a secular bull market and so with all that said the big question is well is the stock market going into a secular bear or is it going to have another move up for the next 3 or 4 years or whatever and so one thing that can determine that, if you look at when secular bears started in the stock market, you look at uh, 1929, 1968, 2000, look at the 40-month moving average because the 40-month moving average, when you're in a secular bull for the stock market, for the most part, not all the time, but for the most part, the 40-month moving average is support. And so since 2009, that has been support. It did go below it during the COVID crash, but that didn't last. The market rebounded aggressively. And so if you look at, again, 1929, uh, 1968, and 2000, those were the first points, you know, at during those secular bulls, those were the first points when the S&P fell below the 40-month moving average significantly. So those were the first points that you had this significant breakdown. So that was the technical sig signal that the stock market was going into a secular bear. And interestingly, the bottom that we had in June in the S&P, it was at the 40-month moving average. Now, that doesn't necessarily uh, you know, mean it's 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 everything's over and they, and now we know the secular bull is going to continue because if you look at even going back to i want to say yeah 2000 1968 1929 there were some points in there where the market initially rebounded from the 40 month moving average but then when it rolled over again and fell below it so that's something that i'm watching very carefully over the coming months to see if uh you know is the stock market going to continue? Is it going to hold above the lows? 
can hold above the 40 month moving average. If it does that, then you have to say to yourself, well, you know, it looks like, you know, it's not going to be gold's time uh, yet. However, over the coming months, if we see the stock market fall below the 40 month moving average, which I believe it's in the low to mid 3,600, something like that. So if the S and P falls below that over the coming months, or even if it happens, in, even if it's six months or eight months, that's a signal that, okay, gold is really going to, really going to fly higher the next couple of years. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, you know, this month or next month, but that's the signal that tells you, okay, gold is going much higher over the next three, five, seven years. And so the reason is if we see the stock market roll over again in the next, you know, two, three, four, five months, and it trades lower and breaks that low, that's going to, that's going to coincide with, you're going to get worse economic data you're going to be probably in a steeper recession than you think. And the Fed is going to be forced like, okay, well, inflation's still a problem, but inflation's coming down. We're going to have to cut interest rates now. So it all fits together. Uh, and again, on the other side, you know, the Fed will, even if there's a soft landing, like let's go to the scenario where there's a soft landing uh, and, and the market doesn't, it, you know, maybe it goes down to 3,600 again, it retests the low, but it doesn't break it. You know, the economy has some kind of a soft landing. Even in that scenario, the Fed will still probably cut rates at some point, but and you will see a rally in gold and silver. But in that scenario, you're not you're going to see gold rally, but it's not going to break above you know two thousand or twenty one hundred and go to three thousand. That's not going to happen in that scenario. So all these things are related. That's why it's so important to watch what happens in the stock market because if the stock market makes a lower low. That's telling us, okay, now it's gold's really going to fly. Silver will catch up. However, on the other hand, if we see a, the stock market doesn't make a new low, we have a soft landing. You know, maybe the Fed cuts rates a little bit. Uh, the, the Fed cutting rates that will be bullish for gold and silver, but you're not going to get the moonshot move in that scenario. Technically, we are in a recession, perhaps looking at stagflation. Historically, how do miners and precious metals play out in a stagflationary environment? And would this time be any different? Well, my, miners are going to follow the metals. And so, it, it, I mean, this is really interesting about stagflation because everybody thinks we're in stagflation. This is a repeat of the 1970s. And I mean, we for the most part, we probably are. You know, the economy is doing okay. It's in a technical recession, as you said. Um, inflation's high, you know, if there's growth, it's not really significant. However, the one big uh, distinction between now and the 70s, which we have not seen yet, is the unemployment rate rising. Now, if you go back to the late 60s and the 70s, the unemployment rate, even at the beginning of those recessions, unemployment was a lagging indicator. So there was still some there was still some job growth into the start of the recession. However, that's been that was the that's been the key distinction right now economically is you go back to those periods, uh, you have high inflation, the economy's in recession, and unemployment was rising during those periods. So the unemployment rising that has been the thing that we've yet to see, and also economically. We're yes, we're in a technical recession, but it's it hasn't been a full blown recession yet, and so that's been that's another issue uh, for gold uh, in the gold price uh, because it it's going to perform best around the time you know when you're in a recession and things are bad. The problem, you know, in 2021, for example. Yes, you had high inflation, but you still had some growth. The economy was still growing. Uh, unemployment, you know, the unemployment rate was still going down. So in that scenario, capital moved into not gold, but, you know, capital was moving into general stocks. You saw some capital going into commodities, but not gold and silver. So that's been, that's been the, at least to this point, that's been the difference between now and back then is we haven't seen like a full-blown recession yet. We haven't seen the unemployment rate rising. 
And I, I think, I, I mean, I think I'm not leading to the soft landing scenario. I mean, that is one scenario. It's important to know these scenarios. I don't think we're going to have the soft landing. I think at some point over the coming months, you know, we will see a full blown recession. Unemployment will start to rise. And, you know, that's going to, that's when gold uh, is really going to perform a lot better when the Fed is forced to, you know, maybe unemployment comes or maybe in the inflation rate comes down to, you know, it's going to come down to six, five, four percent. And then maybe, you know, the Fed funds is at three percent. They'll say, OK, well, now we have to cut rates. It's, you know, rates aren't that negative. Now we can cut rates. Uh, so, the, I mean, that scenario, stock market rolling over, unemployment's rising. That's when gold is really going to move. And so that's been it's important for people to understand this. And even it's something I didn't know right away. I had to do the research and look at history. But it's important to understand that if you still have positive economic growth and you know, you don't have unemployment rising, capital is not going to flow into gold, at least that much. Uh, but however, I mean, I do think that with the way things are trending, you know, at some point in the next three, six, nine months, you will see the you will see a real recession and unemployment will rise. Fed will be forced to cut rates and then, you know, capital will be flowing into precious metals that that's the scenario that you need to have a real bull market in gold and not just a blip where it, you know, it does a $300 rally and that's it. All right. So we should be watching the stock market and the labor market as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, you can also watch, you know, you, you want to watch things like the bond market. Are we going to see more, you know, yield curve inversions? Um, there's obviously the twos and the tens, the two year and the 10 year, you have a very significant inversion there. And I will point this out. Uh, I, I looked over the last 68 years or so. I mean, since 1953, uh, you've had 11 yield curve inversions, the twos and the tens, you've had 10 recessions. So the only time was 1966 that's the only time you had an inversion and you did not have a recession so the the yield curve and it's a future that portends to a future recession you know not the technical one that we're in now so that that's a very strong indicator another thing to look at is the three month yield versus the 10 year yield uh that's another one that's really close to inverting it's probably going to invert uh after the fed uh after they hike 50 bips uh, in a month or so, that one will probably invert. So that's another significant one that a lot of Fed people uh, specifically watch. So uh, I, yeah, it, you do want to look at the economic data, but markets and the credit markets are going to lead. And, you know, just one other thing that I'll point out, I don't know if I've, I've mentioned this to your audience, but I, I looked at the six cyclical bears during the three secular bears that we've had and uh, each of those markets rallied they had a bear market rally where they rallied up to the 200 day moving average and i looked at the data and the average in median time when that happens is seven and a half months into the bear and we are a couple of days ago we hit the 200 day moving average it was exactly seven and a half months into it so we're following I mean, you never know if his, history is going to play out. You know, we've discussed these scenarios, soft landing versus a you know real recession. If this is a real recession, uh, then we've just hit a point where the market should really reverse. And I mean, it's it's a really you know, potentially a really great selling opportunity for people if you believe there's going to be a full blown recession and not a soft landing. So we've followed we've followed that template of a bear market during secular bears. And so that's another, I mean, that's another key thing to consider. And so if the market, you know, does roll over, it's important to watch again, the yield curve. So we're watching the bond market, credit market, stock market, because if all these, th you know, these things are leading indicators If they end, if they trend lower and they reveal that, well, the economy, there's there, things are really moving in the wrong direction. We're going to start to see job law. I mean, those are the leading indicators that are going to tell you um, 
that the Fed is going to have to stop hiking and then move to cuts. Also, the two-year yield by itself. So if, if we see the two-year yield put in a peak and then really decline aggressively, uh, the Fed they, the Fed follows the two-year yields. So that's another leading indicator to watch. So there's there's these various markets and things that we can watch, which will lead to the Fed stopping the hikes and then eventually having to cut. All right, Jordan Roy Byrne from the dailygold.com. You've given us quite a bit to chew on, quite a bit to look at. As I always say, keep your head on a swivel. We thank you for giving us your outlook. Let's meet up again in a few months and see how things pan out. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. That was Jordan Roy Byrne from the dailygold.com sharing his short-term views on gold and silver. As always, please leave your thoughts in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. And I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.